Welcome back to another exciting edition, <laughs> might be a strong word, for uh, my Sunday scores. I am drowning in stuff. My truck is still completely full of junk. I'm doing a big yard sale, bike yard sale swap meet thing this Saturday. I'm hoping to sell as much of this stuff for as cheap as possible and probably put the rest of it in a free box or give it away. But does that stop me from my addiction, from my hoarding? It really doesn't. Here is today's score. So I got a Schwinn High Sierra from 1986 from a guy. He was the original owner. And he bought it and rode it in the 80s and broke his collarbone on it and then rode it all through college. And then, uh, and then decided he wanted to give it to a friend and that friend wanted me to have it instead. So he made me go pick it up. It needs everything, but it's kind of cool. And I also got some stuff from, uh, Community Cycling Center salvage sales and some stuff from the old bike farm. I spent triple at bike farm this week what I spent at the um, salvage sales, which is very backwards and totally crazy. But I think I got some good stuff. All right, let's check it out. <laughs> oh, oh, dear God. Why? All right, not so bad. Oh, boy. <laughs> So this Schwinn High Sierra, he said uh, it's been in storage for at least 10 years. He, he took it down 10 years ago to steal the tire off of it for, for his kids' bikes and then never put it back together, never put the wheel back on. But it's kind of cool. Oh, that is so beat up. It's also really beat up. Um, but it's got Sun Tour, Power Ratchet, dummies. They're the best friction shifter ever made. The rear is in really good shape. The front is real beater. It's got some old Shimano mountain bike, bike like four finger levers that are pretty cool. It's got the original six millimeter cable and housing, special ferrules. It's got kind of a cool uh, bar and stems, SR slingshot style, which is pretty cool. He had someone replace the front brake at some point. It's like a black modern -y BMX -y U brake on it, Odyssey. The rear is still the original Cunningham Suntour roller brake. They don't really work very well and have a lot of problems. And he said it, the front popped loose on him one day when he was bombing down some hill and the back wouldn't stop him and made him wreck and break his collarbone. I have heard this before that uh, the trick to these is to take these Cunningham brakes right off, sell them on eBay, which I often do. I have one up there that's been up there for four or five months for 50 bucks. I've often sold them for 70, 80 bucks in less good condition, so I don't know. But the trick is that U-brakes will just bolt right on and solve all of your problems. So that's really the thing to do. BMX U-brake. Um, what else is cool about this bike? It's got cranks. They're a little scruffy. They look like some Sagino. Oh, no, there's SR 175, 110, 74BCD 80s mountain bike cranks. The derailers are... Uh, the derailers are a Sun Tour XC. They're a little beat. I also don't know if this bike's savable. He really wants me to save it and restore it and send him pictures. I don't know. How's the seat post? Oh, oh not frozen. There's a girl at my dog park who's got like four dollars to her name and just moved here and she can't get around. She thinks she wants an e-bike real bad. But uh, I'll see if she wants this and wants to fix it up. I'll give it to her for free and even give her free tires and tubes. <laughs> Do a whole bunch of work for free, which you will not appreciate. Um, so that's my thought with this. Otherwise, I'll, I'll take it and I'll see if the parts are savable. If they're savable, I really might, you know, overhaul it and clean it up like a psycho um, and sell it for half what I think it's worth. And if it's not, I'm going to pull it apart for parts because it's got at least that shifter is worth the price you want to pick it up. His brake levers are actually really cool. I'm Kind of digging on them. I wonder if they... I can't really see. But I wonder if they uh, have a cool part number on them or something. Uh, Japan! M700. I don't think that's a cool part number. They're still cool. So this is the last thing I just went and picked up. Let's check out the other scores. 
I'm sure it's fine. So, after the Sunday salvage sale, I went to the uh, bike farm. I was looking around, someone donated a bunch of nice forks. It looked like it looked like a bunch of all city forks and some other forks, a lot of modern disc things, through axle things, and some of them they knew were all sitting at like 75 bucks on, some they didn't have prices on, and they were cheap. One of the guys who worked there pointed this fork out to me. I am almost positive this is a Tony Pereira fork from Breadwinner Cycles. Um, it is pretty dang nice. It really looks like his style, the old cable top tube guides. Rack mounts on the end, slightly raked, um, probably heavy duty, usually like a chainstay instead of a fork blade or like a tandem chainstay. Um, these Paragon long disc tabs, have the built in stiffener. The brazing looks pretty dang nice. The, the fork dropouts in backwards, this is something that Ahern and Pereira did a lot of. Some other frame builders did a lot of back when disc was early and no one was making specialty dropouts and stuff. Because they thought that when you clamped the braking pressure, try to yank the hub backwards. It's better to yank it into the dropout than uh, if these were on normal. You could yank out and the wheel could come loose. No labels or markings at all. I think I learned this trick from Pereira. Um, a hammered in one inch star nut. So you can bolt your fender on there, which is a very Pereira thing. Pereira, also a lot of his stuff has uh, brazons in here. So it might not be a Pereira, but it might be because he just had this breadwinner downsizing sale and I went and did this fabulous video on going to that and buying a bunch of stuff. I was supposed to call him today to go buy more stuff, but I'm this close to not making rent this month, so I am not going to do that. See if he still has it in a week. And when I was leaving, I took it over, I walked back past uh, Sunday salvage sales because they're basically in the same like little strip mall now. And he's like, oh, that doesn't look like a prayer. And he pulled out three more prayer forks that prayer donated um, to the CCC. Like a one inch threadless, disc um 26 or fork and a fat bike fork that he accidentally put regular dropouts in instead of through axle dropouts so he never used it and uh some other really cool like yellow fork i tried to buy them they wouldn't sell them i offered him 30 bucks he laughed in my face and said yeah right i'm like all right i mean it's weird stuff it's like we're gonna put them on ebay call them breadwinner forks i'm like it's like it's a little scandalous i'm like that's a little scandalous at least say they're Tony Pereira forks, you know, breadwinner's owner, pre-breadwinner, you know, something. Use the word breadwinner as a key search, but also breadwinner's kind of a famous frame building brand here in Portland, but I still bet 99% of all cyclists ever have never heard of it. But this is cool. It's intonated threadless. It'd be great for 26 or like a 700 commuter. I don't think it's like really tall enough for big 29 stuff, but it's a cool fork. I couldn't pass it up. They debated on the price. They were thinking 30, then they were thinking 20, and they ended up giving me for 25. So that's cool. That fork, you know, to order. If you had me custom make you that fork today, it would be 350 bucks plus paint would be a couple hundred bucks. So 25 bucks for a 500 dollars fork. If I can find something all the right things for one of my friends can, it's worth holding on to. I also got this Marathon Plus. Uh, the original Schwabi Marathon. Oh, it's a green guard. It's not a plus. Brand new at the bike farm. Someone donated it with the tag on 16 by 175. So weird kids bike size. They didn't care at all. They gave it to me for $8. This is like a $40 or $50 tire. Um, I want it for my little Bob trailer. And I'm going to do a video on the Bob trailer. I got some new hardware for it and some stuff. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give the Bob trailer a little overhaul and a little makeover. So I am glad that I scored the last part of me, which is a nice tire. So that was my bike farm score. They had one uh, fixed gear back wheel that was someone pulled a sticker off of some generic silver rim to a polished surly flip-flop track hub. And they're like, yeah, we want like 35. And I'm like, can I see your wheel trimming stand and a spoke temperature And I got it in the stand and it had a big flat spot in it. You know, someone hopped a curve or something. It looked brand new, but it was... It was macked, and I was like, nah, bro. I'm like, eh, we'll save it for the spokes. I'm like, saving you spokes. It's weird, man. Some of my best scores. So with a salvage sale, I barely bought anything. I only spent $10 at the salvage sale. It was like the least I've ever spent in my entire life there. Lots of stuff in the bag. But their free box was rocking, and I got some stuff out of the free box. This is my most exciting thing. Check it out. Super tall, super stubby Nitto Technomic stem. 
on Old Modolo Bar with Altegra shifters, which are missing the little toppy cappies, but other than that, seem fine. Altegra 9 speed shifters. Really, these used Nitto stems go for 25 or 30 bucks. It's just greasy, it'll clean up. It's not too scuffy. It's real short and cute. It's 26 O bar. It's cute. It's cute in the free box. Best score there. This was also in the free box. It also has Altegra, maybe 9, maybe 10 speed shifters. Also missing the. Also missing the little top cappy things. Also, seems like they might work just fine. The hoods are okay. Dumb bone trigger bar no one cares about. Kind of older Richie stem. It's kind of cool. I'll probably be able to sell that stuff on the eBay's for not too expensive. It's just not pretty. I also grabbed this. Someone, uh, Meller Naminsky, looks like might have ordered this brand new and never opened it. Cool. But it looks like some cheap, generic Swagman, upright roof rack, Velo. Looks like some cheap, generic kind of uh, little bike rack for your roof rack. I have a roof rack on this. I don't have the bike racks. There was a set of the right bike racks for this at the Goodwill bins the other day, and they were taking the bin away, and they won't let you dig out of it. And I was like, I need those, and they're like, get out of the bin. So I missed them. But this was free. I have no idea if it's high quality, if it'll fit on the roof rack I have. But I'm going to pull it out and see, and if not, I'll put it out in my free box at my garage sale this Saturday. Whatever. We're going to do in the box car roof rack. Uh, this ridiculous turd was also in the free pile. It is totally cool because it's the Trek post office um, bike. It's all Craven fiber with aluminum dropouts. It is old, it is beater, it is scruffy. Anyone who wants to ride this is a total sociopath. You know, some people ride old carbon and does not care. It's got a matching set, a kind of polishy, nice to a peak water bottle cages, but really I grabbed it because it has this Altegra 9-speed front derailleur, which looks fine. I want this front derailleur. It's a little crusty. This thing's kind of crusty with corrosion. Probably from something I wrote it a lot and sweat it all over. I got the paints all like corroded off and the aluminum anodizing is kind of corroded off. This bike's got some miles. It's got the Craybon fork. It's got a Cane Creek headset, which is probably great. It's got some spacers. It's got a bell mount. Maybe I'll steal some parts off. At least take this Derailleur and probably the water bottle cages, though I have so many water bottle cages and no one cares. Oh, it's got some pretty serious tire rub in there. Stop running tires that are too big on your bike. This is why. That is burnt, not just through the paint, but that is millimeters deep in that tube. That tube is paper thin, if not worn all the way out. You might be able to press on it real hard with your finger and it'll crack all the way through that carbon. It happens on steel and aluminum bikes too. Just a tire doesn't look sharp but just a thousand revolutions of it, just buzzing, buzzing, buzzing every time you stand or crush, buzz, 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 your wheel comes a little bit out of your wheel, buzz, buzz, buzz. I mean, you know, a little river carved the Grand Canyon. It doesn't take that much. And eventually your frame is recycling. This is probably recycling. Put it in the free pile and a homeless person will take it and leave it at their camp and the city will have to come along, clean it up, take it to the dump someday. Very excite. That one's empty, so this one. More free stuff. This is also in the free box. It's a nice set of size small uh, MKS NJS stamped toe cages and some straps. Some of the false straps, still better than Welgo. And it's got all four bolts and hardware. These are nice. I'm planning on building a little tiny fix here. Maybe I'll put these on. That's a little tiny MKS track pedal. It'll be super cute. Brake levers, I shouldn't have bought them. I wanted to, they have gross white hoods. They don't feel sticky, they're dirty. I'll wash them and hand cleaner and scrub them. They're not scuffy erect at all. The springs are still good. If I can get these hoods pretty clean, these are some nice old uh, Aero Grand Comp. 
Arrow brake levers. These are pretty nice. These are pretty nice. Maybe I should have got these. Maybe this is a, an okay thing to grab. I was looking around. Everyone was going through all the bins. They beat me because I went to the free bin first. There's so much stuff in there. And then I was realizing that people missed a bin hidden in the back behind all the other bins. So I pulled it out. First thing there was, Diacompy Fixie Kid front brake. I think this is a recessed nut somebody's put a bolt on. So you can use it as a rear bolt on or a front recess. Um, it's black. It's not very scuffy. Like, it's pretty nice. I think this will be the brake I want for the next fixed gear I build. It's got some brand new Jaguar pads. Looks like they've been used like twice. There's a little dirt, but no wear. There's a bunch of front derailers in that bin, including this 34.9 Dionysus Dior XT top pole or top top swing top pole. Wrap around, total weirdness. But Dior XT, not scuffy. No, it's not cool, but front derailleur is coming back. Triples are coming back. One visor, big and stupid, and give you less range and gear than you want. I also got this 34.9 Dior XT front derailleur. All the hardware is there. It's also a weird, looks like sort of top cable running. Top pole of some weird way. Maybe it's bottom pole. I don't know. I don't know. It's a Dior XT. Whoever's working on this, they'll know. Another set of 318 cross top levers. They're definitely Tektros, but the logos are off. But they're complete. Not scuffy and totally fine. Shimano Dior front. It looks like a 10 speed for front triple uh, shifter. Except for it might be a double. Or one, two, and then nothing. Either that is just not getting that last gear and just needs a little cleaning and I don't know. M610. But I think I have the rear. I might actually just have the front. <laughs> uh kinda dirty, a little bit worn out, really modern Shimano 105. Goofy front derailleur. They're making all their more expensive modern stuff look like cheaper turny stuff because they're crazy. The back pulley's got some wear. The front pulley looks pretty good. It's really not that scuffy. Doesn't feel that worn out. R7000. It's probably 11 speed or something. A little bit of scuff. It's not much. I do have an 11 speed cassette and 11 speed wheel set. I just needed some sort of 11 speed trigger shifter or thummy. Make a cool one by city bike. What else? What else? What else? I got a couple stems. I cannot help myself. I'm a total psycho. I have so many threadless stems. I never use them. Put them up for sale. I barely resell. That's a kind of shorter dimensions. It's got the real positive rise. That's what the kids want. Bolts are a little crusty, but not too much. It doesn't say if it's 26.0 or 25.4. I'm going to assume 25.4, which is better. Maybe this will be good for Avery's bike. Got this Bond Traeger because it's kind of shorter and 25.4 also might be good for Avery's bike. A little bit of positive rise. I don't usually mention mess with these old Cruiser. Uh, these are old Diacoms with the old logo. They got the red buttons. One side's more sun faded than the other. They still have little top caps. They're not scruffy or wrecked. This is a pretty cute old Cruiser lever set. I want it for some Finnegy Japanese bike. I have a few. I don't think anyone's in good shape. Oh, another front derailleur, just a regular Dior. Also, the Dionysus. Also has all the hardware. Some weird top cable routing, some weird hard mount thing. But I think I have an adapter. They make adapters for that, so you can put it on uh, whatever you want. I did find one set of Sun Tour AccuShift silver down tube uh, shifters with all the hardware. And you can put these on friction or on 7 speed index. For your Sun Tour derailers and cassettes and things and three wheels. But you know, it's real clean. It's real nice. Someone will give me 20 bucks for them on eBay. Because <laughs> I'm a psycho, another set of these down tube cable stop um, adjusters. They you know, take the place of your down tube shifters and let you run the STIs and have the cables come into them. I have like 500 sets of these. 
I really ought to put a few out of the garage sale. Maybe I'll put this set out of the garage sale. They're like 15 or 20 wholesale new, you know, like I got one, this is funny, one used but pretty clean. It's aluminum with no wrench marks. There is some, so the chrome's all rubbed off on the top, it looks good on the bottom. Some stippling, they put it in the, in the wrong size head tube or head tube is stretched out. For a pretty nice cheapy VO aluminum headset with one iron steel ring also in it for reasons. I want to say no, I have a million headsets, but it says Velo Orange right on it, and I have a soft spot for Velo Orange. Some of the stuff's kind of cheap, some of the older stuff's kind of really cheapy. Some of it's really nice, and the newer stuff's getting nicer and higher quality all the time. It's some of the best stuff you can get, and they make a bright silver, and they're making a nice gloss black now too, which I'm not going to use, but I appreciate. But I like my, my silver stuff. See, so I hit the chain ring bin, I got this four bolt little eensy beensy bash guard. It is cute. It's going to take a tiny ring. I have no idea what kind of 4 bolt. Hopefully it's 104 Shimano, but I don't really know. But I couldn't not get it. And I got two rings. This is another 110 34 FSA. I just took one of these. I have like five of these now. I can't stop buying them. I just took one of these and put it on the nothing special Schwinn because I'm getting it ready to sell. And I had a 36 chain ring with a match uh, for a Sagino AT set. It's only going to have the times I put it on. So I took it off and put this 34 on, which I always wanted to do. And uh, took my dog basket out of the front and pumped up the tires. And I got locking skewers on. I might take them off and put regular good quick releases in. I went through all my quick releases last night and threw everything mismatched in my free box and kept a few good sets for myself and threw a bunch in the in the cheapy pile for the garage sale. But this is nice. The one I threw on was sun faded, so it's more of a gray than a black. It kind of matches the rest of the gray stuff on it. So. Thought it was kind of cool. But yeah, 110, 34, what a good size. And this all gray, zero wear at all. It's got to be a takeoff. There's no witness marks at all. No chain rub marks at all. Totally nice. It says 3953 V2. I think that means it's like SRAM or Truitive, the V2. Um, 39 tooth. It's probably a 130 Road BCD. I love these, you know, because all the old road cranks are 5242, and both those rings are too big for me. So switching to a 39 and then just never using the outer ring or putting a bash guard on is really how I roll. And it's a cool gray color. And the last thing, this has been there for months. I've always wanted it, and I finally bought it. It's called a Bad Bones Bicycle Anti-Theft Device. And I think this is for a Kryptonite U-Lock. So you can put this on your U-Lock to make your U even smaller so that um, people can't get car jacks in that. So that's how people are doing, taking like little spare tire car jacks from import cars, putting it between your U and jacking it up. That's the new way Scriptonite's made their locks smaller and smaller and smaller. But also, I don't know, this is steel, but it's not heavy because it's little. It's pretty cool. I might try it, it might not fit anything. It's been there for weeks, I could not grab it. Oh, I was only in 10 bucks. What else is in here? Oh, found one more bag of these giant, giant, giant cable narps. These things are just double the size of normal ones. I got a few other bags from them before. I have no idea what they come with. But they're huge for brake cables, probably for oversized brake cables, maybe for motor scooters, who knows. But I got them and they are all mine now, bro. So that is my little score for this Sunday. That's all I got, other than the other three videos I just finished on last week's scores, which are insane. Three-parter, probably should have been four parts. Um, but yeah, man, if you're in the Portland area, we're going to be next Saturday the 1st. Come to my garage sale swap meet thing. Come bring some stuff and sell it. I'm just going to run like an informal swap meet. Just show up. Take a spot in the yard. I got a huge yard. Got a, well, it's, it's a pretty good sized front yard. It's a nice little side yard. And I got a huge backyard for overflow if it gets that big. I should organize a real swap meet. But, you know, I like to focus on me because everyone just comes to buy my stuff and it's cool. No one else has better stuff better deal. Someone's got to look at my stuff twice as hard. Oh, so many more things I could have bought. So many more things I could have bought. There's a few forks I wanted at Bike Farm. But I did not. Oh, I didn't even show this off. I pull it out of the way and show it off. So this is um, some bar tape that was at the CCC. It looks like it's two separate rolls, but they're new. One black vinyl-y roll and uh, 
one brand new Shelly Celesti roll. So maybe I get some bullhorns or something, or want to do a mis mismatch to do. I, just, I can't not grab some rolls of bar tape. It's a brand new <laughs> match. <laughs> Mismatching bar tape sometimes is fun. Um, so anyways, that is the scores. Thanks for watching. I'll do a video on the garage sale, and I think I'll start Avery's bike. So maybe I'll do a video series on tricking it out too. So thanks for watching again <laughs> for fifth time. 500 times. Thanks for watching.